Hello, and welcome to this video that I've wanted to do for a while now, but I haven't really had the chance to. I'm wearing a shirt, it has pockets here for some reason, I don't know. But yeah, I'm here, and I'm doing a video that I haven't really had the time to do until now. So I've finished uni, ding ding, and uh, lockdown, and summer. So I've got about four months, five months to uh, just make videos. What am I doing? Well, let me tell you. So I was watching a Patty Trill stream. He was doing a Kecleon solo run of Fire Red. And I thought, this actually looks quite fun. I might give it a go myself on uh, Pokemon Black. And I will use Sandile. That's what this video is. Can you beat Pokemon Black using a Sandile? Uh, the results may shock you. Or not. I, I don't know. They didn't really shock me. <laughs> so, uh, t t why Sandile? Well, Sandile. Introducing Gen 5, so I couldn't do a Sandile run of Pokemon Platinum. And also, he's returning in the upcoming Isle of Armor DLC. We saw him in the trailer just waddling about, so I thought, you know what? Now's the perfect time to do a Sandile solo run. While his hype is at, is at peak levels, get in there and capitalise on that. I don't think anyone's hyped about Sandile, but I am. So, uh, that's peak levels for me. <laughs> Why Pokemon Black? Well, it was his debut game. It's my favourite Pokemon game. And the soundtrack bloody slaps, I'm telling you. It goes hard. So what are the rules? Well, I can only use Sundial in battle. He's the only Pokemon I can use. Um, that's it, pretty much. There's one instance in the game where I can where I can only get through if I have a double battle. But other than that, Sundial is the only Pokemon I can use. I'm allowed to have a Pokemon that I can use as a HM slave, say I need to use Cut or Surf or something, then I can do that. And because it, it's hard to delete HM moves in Gen 5, I've just decided, you know what, we'll just have a Pokemon that learns all these HM moves, which means I can keep Sandal's moveset good, essentially. And that's it really. I'm allowed to use heals in battle because I'm playing this as if I would be playing normal Pokemon, where I try to heal my Pokemon in battle, so I'm allowing that. I know some solo runs don't allow that, but I figured, you know what, it's, it's how I play Pokemon, I might as well use it. Now this was a solo run I was a bit apprehensive to doing. Of course it's my first solo run, so I'm new to this, I, I don't know what to do. And there were a few gym leaders that I wasn't looking forward to facing. Now I knew I could be in the likes of Aless Elisa, the electric type gym leader obviously, with my superior ground typing, easy claps for me. But there were people like Bryson and Silan, Cian, Kian, I don't fucking know how you say his name, who uh, scared me because I was only a, a ground dark type boy. So I fired up the universe Pokemon randomizer, gave myself Sandile as a starter Pokemon, replaced him with Oshawott because not really the biggest fan of Oshawott, prefer Snivy and Tepig, that's, that's all I'm saying, please don't leave hate, plus. Now this probably wasn't the best choice as it meant I had to battle the grass type gym leader and I could have just got rid of Snivy and had a much easier time, but you know what, I prefer Snivy and Snivy's evolution line and Tempic's my favourite star of the generation, so I didn't really want to get rid of him and then be up against two star Pokemon that are super effective against me. So I, I axed Oshawa. You know, it wasn't the best choice, but it is what it is. And then the challenge was afoot. So, Sandile was my star Pokemon, which meant that uh, it, was, it was easy claps. I had, a, I had a stab move at level 5. So, while they were using tackle and like tail whip and stuff, I was just there chomping on them, getting flinches, you know how it is. And that, that was easy. That was, I would wipe the floor with. Sharon and Bianca. Easy claps. And with that, the challenge was on. So after beating my rivals, we uh, go down to see my mum. She's like, yo, have fun on your journey. We go see Professor Juniper. She gives us her po our Pokedex and tells us to go out and complete the Pokedex. And I said, no, I'm only going to be using a Sandile. Sorry, love. We were well on our way. Let's fucking go. After being given a tour around the Pokemon Center in Accumula Town, that was a bloody fascist rally. Nah, Team Plasma were there and they were telling people all of their plan to uh, release all Pokemon. Which is kind of dumb when they themselves are using Pokemon. But yeah, that is what it is. Don't think about it too much. Who's this, uh, who's this, uh, who's this fella in a hat? He's got more character design than the rest of the NPCs. What's, what's going on there? Oh shit, he wants to scrap me. Oh, oh god, oh fuck. Um, Sandile, please. If he wants it, I'll give it to him. And so I did. I gave it to him. And just like that, the nerd in the hat is dead. I killed him. I fucking shivved him. My Sandile ate his remains. I mean, what a fool. Battling the protagonist like that? Does he does he know who he's dealing with? Mr. Sandile himself? Terence the Sandile? What a great name for a Sandile, by the way. Terence? Are you kidding me? That's, it's amazing. 
So after that, we take a lovely walk to Stryton City, where we face our first gym leader, Mr. Sealan, Mr. Celo Green himself. I've decided I I don't know how to say his real name, so I'm just going to call him Celo Green. So we head over to the gym, and there's this dude like, it's Clyde, I think, and he's like, yo. Yeah, so the gym leader's at the trainer school, so if you want to battle him, you're going to have to go there. So I go to the Pokemon school, he's, he's nowhere to be seen, just a bunch of kids, and my rival Sharon, who I clap up again. Yes, please. So with Sharon being soundly defeated, I go back over to the gym. And the gym is like, uh, yes, train or some shit first. Go to the dream yard, and then we'll fight. And so I, I go over to the dream yard, right? Ah, pretty nice place, got it. Yeah, yeah, I'm back. I wrote it. Bust up a couple of wild Pokemon, and then this this dude gives me a monkey. I'm like, what the? F Bro, I don't want a monkey. So that monkey goes straight in the box because this is a sundial only run. Okay, y you hear it? You hear me? Sundial only, alright? Finally, we're allowed to fight the gym. Finally, what I've been waiting for, holy shit. So I walk in there. Ignore the fact that I step on the fire thing twice. I, I wasn't paying attention. I, I know my type matchups, okay? So after, you know, completing easy quiz and battling all these trainers that are just chilling there, you know, not really doing much loitering, if anything. Not even using typed Pokemon, they're using normal types. What the f this isn't the normal gym, that's gym number two. G go, go, shoo! So there we are. S facing off against CeeLo Green. He's like, yo. Beat up his fucking lip up. It's not even a grass type, get out of here. Fake. And then uh, we move on to a. Uh, Hand Siege. Now, I just want to say, having a Sandow with Moxie is. Fucking amazing, because that attack boost comes in very handy many times in this playthrough. So a nice attack boost, you know, it's good, it's good. Everyone loves everyone loves a nice uh, nice attack boost, especially when you're an attacking Sandile. So, you know, we, we make good use of Moxie and defeat this weed monkey, just like it was nothing. And uh, there we go. Gym number one is complete. That's a gym badge for us. Let's go, boys. We did it. After watching Team Plasma beat up a Munna, don't know why they decided to do that, he did nothing wrong. I mean look at it, it's a double little creature and you're just like kicking the shit out of it, trying to get some fucking gas from- I don't know what you're doing lads. Please stop, okay? Just stop. Yeah, we go fight some children, M maybe not better than them kicking the shit out of a harmless floating fetus, but it is what it is. Yeah, we go beat up some kids, go down a slide. And then uh, get harassed by two kids who tell me I need to get another Pokemon to progress. So I was like, well, shit, I failed the challenge. And that's why I stopped. And uh, yeah, that's the video. I'm just kidding. You've seen the watch time on this video. This isn't the end. So I go back. I collect the monkey from his, uh, his confinement. And I set him on some children. Nah, not really. I just use Leah because I don't want him to do any damage. So while it does lower their defense, Sandal's doing everything really. I just, I just had to do the monkey. That's the only way I could progress through the game. I'm sorry, alright? It won't happen again, because that's the only instance of a double battle. Anyway, after being up these children, we meet up with Sharon again, and we clap his cheeks once more. Because, you know, we're, we're an epic Pokemon trainer, that's what we do. So after I leave Sharon defeated, I make my way through Route 3 to Nacreen City, which is... City number three, four. Starting City, Accumulator Town, Strident City, Nacreen City. It's number four. So we're there, number four. Looking at the gym leader. Well, we're not actually looking at the gym leader, we're looking at fucking the nerd is standing outside the museum again. <laughs> so yeah, anyway, Nacreen City. There's the nerd, he's standing outside the museum again. I'm like, bro. Chill out, man. Chill out, alright? I just want to go in the museum, I want to beat this gym leader, and I want to get my badge, alright? So I've beat him up again. When will, he, when will he learn? When will he learn? So after that, I power through the dream trainers, I complete the uh, little challenge about looking at books. And uh, yeah, I was apprehensive about facing Lenora because her gym has proven quite troublesome for me in the past. Retaliate is a hell of a move. I just have to get lucky, uh, and I should be fine. <laughs> And uh, the flinch gods were on my side. One of the bonuses of using bite is it flinches opponents, which is hella, which was hella useful for me in this gym battle. Because my god, I got so many flinches off that it made the the fight easy. I took minimal damage, which I'm, I'm happy with really. <laughs> Can you blame me? 
So after we beat Jim Leader Lenora and the museum gets raided for a Dragonite Skull, we have to do the old pinwheel forest thing with Burr. I do that. We get to s fucking the big city. I forgot its name. Something like Celestia or Celestia Celesti City or something. I don't fucking know. We get there. And then I decide, you know what, I'm going to go to the uh, Route 4 and find some black glasses for my sand dial so I can make him a strong boy. So after catching about six sand dial, I find a pair of black glasses, place the sand dials in the box, they will not be used again. There's nothing against me catching other Pokemon. I was just using the front item anyway. So that's that. We get our black glasses and we're on with the, uh, with the game. We uh, do the Team Plasma thing in Celestia C and we fight Berg. Berg. I don't know how you're supposed to say his name, it's like Bug? Berg? I don't know. I, I really don't know. I did forget the Bug types are kind of super effective against Dark types. That was something I forgot. <laughs> Maybe a bit of an overlook on my part, who knows, but I still cleaned house anyway. Yeah, it was easy. It was easy, we just used fucking Bite. But I managed to crit the Rollipede, you know, took him out of the fight, and then Livani, I was a bit apprehensive because Livani can be a strong Pokemon, but it didn't really pose any threat to me on my Sandile. We are too good! We're too good at the game. So after that, I have to fight both Bianca and Sharon at two, two different points, and I've beaten them both, obviously. I mean, I'm the protagonist of the game. <laughs> Come on now. I get through Route 4 and up to Nimbasa City. Pretty good. We have a, have a Ferris rule date with them. It was alright, you know. In the battle we have after our little date, he beat me. I know, this little fucking nerd beat me. So, you know what I did? Fought him again and won. <laughs> There's no rule about, it's not a Nuzlocke, alright? If I was Nuzlocking this, that'd been it. That'd been done, finito, but I'm not Nuzlocking this. It's just a normal solo run, so I can read battle trainers as much as I like. And you can't stop me, because I've already done it. <laughs> anyway, we take on the gym. Now, I wasn't sweating about the gym. Ele electric types, please. Sound out, eats those for dinner. It just made me realise how much I hate a Molga. First, can't be your ground type moves. That's alright, I can live with that. But it's when it has static. And all I'm using is physical moves. Good lord, I hate Amolga. Static plus double team is hell. I'm sure if any of you got paralyzed and then had Amolga double team on you, you'd be thinking the same thing. It is really fucking hard to hit that bitch. But we manage, only to find out that Lisa has two on her team, two of these flying fucking rats. I know, disgraceful. Anyway, we easily cleaned up and that was badge number four on about. Cha-ching. So yeah, we've got four badges now. We're halfway through the gym challenge and Sanzaila hasn't faulted yet. So that's good. That is something good. Another battle with Sharon later, and then we team up with Sharon to fight a bunch of toddlers for the elder. So we make clean work of these children. You know, it is what it is. Being children, easy peasy. And then we make our way to Driftville City over the lovely bridge. It's pretty good. It's a pretty good bridge. I'm not gonna lie, it's a fucking good bridge. There's a couple of good bridges in this game, to be fair. Before the clay fight, though, we had to round up a bunch of Team Plasma goons. Now, from my prior knowledge of this game, I knew they were in a cold storage warehouse, so... I go and investigate. And wouldn't you know it, there they are in a shipping container. Personally, would have locked the shipping container and sent them off to fucking Kalos or some shit, but apparently not. Apparently we have to beat them, so we do. Easily, take care of them. P beaten. Oh, the sand dial. Pow. Now me and Clay, we have something in common. We both use ground types. Now, uh, he kind of has an unfair advantage because he has three. And one of them has a water typing. So... Yeah, not the best. But it could have been worse, because we beat him. We cleaned house with him. Though it did take two attempts. So I fought him first time, Palpatode ended, game ended me, so I went up, did a bit of, did a bit of grinding, and uh, fought him again and beat him. Now that Palpatode was a hurdle, I will say it. Water typing really does frick me up. But I managed, Eskadrill was easy, it's like weak to ground type moves, so like, easy peasy lemon squeezy, you know what I'm saying, you know what I'm saying? And that was that. Badge 5 was mine. Lovely jubbly. We're three badges away from being Pokemon Champion. Let's go, boys. After beating Bianca yet again, we make our way to Charger Stone Cave where we, you know, we talk to Juniper and Bianca. We push a bunch of gems around. We build up N yet again. This fucking nerd keeps showing up. And I keep cleaning up with him. Because, you know, I'm just, I'm just the best trainer there is. And there we are. We're at Millstrone City. Millstraton City. I don't fucking know how you say it. Okay. But we're there. We did it. Ready to face... Skylar. Skylar. But first we have to go to a Pokemon Cemetery. Kills the mood a bit, I know. But it is what it is, so we'd be a bunch of ghost types in there. Probably the souls of dead Pokemon that we just destroyed. Kinda fucked up, but Sandals a dark type, so we made easy work of it. We ring the bell, we go back down, and we get ready to fight Skylar. Bap. Now this one I knew would be a bit, a bit of a different battle because... Well, flying types are immune to ground type attacks, so... 
I couldn't use half my moveset. So I had to stick with my dark type moves, which, you know, it was fine. They're, they're strong anyway, I've got the black glasses, I'm, a, I'm an attacking boy. Easy work. Now I know she had a swanner, which made me a bit apprehensive, but turned out it wasn't even that much of a, that much of a hurdle. Swoobat was dropped by a bite, so that was easy. Swanna was dropped, and then fucking Unpheasant was dropped, so yeah, it wasn't that bad. <laughs> I don't know why I was worried. I mean, water type attacks, yeah, but didn't get a chance to do one, did it? Because I'm fucking, fucking Inch, alright? Fucking Sandile, me, strong lads, alright? So yeah, after another battle with Sharon, finding these kids TM, and then uh, a run through Tis Twist Mountain. I choose a Max Repel again, because I was already over leveled, so I figured, you know what, I'd be a re. Battle a couple trainers, you know what it is. Bing bash, bish bash, boom. We're there, we're done, we're through to, uh, was it, Icarus City. Home of Bryson, the ice type ninja gym leader man, who can see shadow people. Now, I'm be real. I was already sweating into Bryson. Despite ground types being inherently weak to ice types, I wasn't really fussed. I, to be honest, I thought that ground types were super effective against ice types. So, I was filled with false confidence, but it paid off because we won anyway. That was easy. easy. Easiest game of my life. Easy collapse. Done. Taken care of. Finito. Didn't even have to do it again. Just one, one take. Now, this is where the story really heats up, because after the battle with Bryson, um, N summons fucking Zekrom. This fucking nerd now has control of a legendary dragon Pokemon, and just fucking flies off from Dragon, Spy dragon Spiral Tower. Now everyone's like, what the f- This man says a legendary Pokemon is going to destroy the world. Oh, no! So we're sent to Relic Castle. To uh, I don't know what I don't know why we were sent to Relic Castle. But I know Getsis was there, and he threw some exposition at us after we fell through Relic Castle, and then he left. So I don't know really what the point of that was. It's just to pad out the game time, maybe. Uh, Volcarona's there, but obviously we're not allowed to catch it yet, and it's it's a, it's a fucking solo run. So so after that, we go back to Necreen City. Uh, receive the light orb from the museum, which is. Pretty cool, we got a fucking white ball. Love that for me. So we're given the light orb so that we can do an epic battle with N. We have to go defeat Dryden, the dragon type gym leader of Opelucid City. But anyway, we'll make our way to Opelucid City over another long ass bridge. And there's a bloody another Team Plasma rally going on. Now that they've uh, got Zekrom, they've been emboldened. And they start spreading their propaganda to scared masses because they have a legendary Pokemon and no one else does. So after I fumble the uh, dragon puzzle a bit, we fight Dryden. Bit of a tough fight, I will not lie. He was he was a tough cookie to crack, but we do crack him. I beat that old man's ass, and from there I have completed the gym challenge. We've got all eight badges, it's time to take on the Elite Four and Victory Road. Let's fucking go, boys. So after passing through the badge checkpoint and using max repels throughout the entirety of Victory Road and taking a few wrong turns, we finally make it to the Elite Four and the Pokemon League. Oh boy. This is where it gets a bit tough. The Elite Four of Unova consists of a Dark type trainer, a Ghost type, a Psychic type, and a Fighting type. Now these three, easy claps, but the fourth man, bloody hell, I cannot take this guy on. Fighting types, my one weakness, along with grass, water, and ice. But you know what? We powered through. I stuck to one heels, and then I went. I figured, you know what? If we take out the Fighting type trainer first, I'll have a clear shot of the rest of the Elite Four. So that's what I did. I challenged him, and I lost. I hate throw, <laughs> okay? Throw plus bulldoze plus my sand dial does not equal a good time because that thing drops your speed. And speed is very important in a Pokemon battle because it decides who's going to go first. Now, Conkelda isn't fast. The speed boost did not phase me when it came to him. So it's the third and fourth Pokemon which really, you know, do me in. Throw, throw is easy, right? He got bulldoze off, but I killed him. Now, Conkelda, bulky mans, didn't kill him in one shot and he hammer armed me to, to death. So I thought, you know what, going to grind a few levels, and we'll try again. The same thing, grind up a few more levels, I finally knock him out in one hit with an earthquake. Poggers, but we still got the speed debuff. Then we fight Mian Shao. Now Mian Shao is fast, but without the speed drop, I would have outspeeded. So this speed drop really cooked me. So I kept getting beaten by Mian Shao and her high jump kicks. She didn't miss. For the longest time she did not miss a high jump kick, just consecutively killing me with them. But then, a high jump kick missed. And I took down Mian Shao. Now I thought this was the run where I'd, I'd do it, I'd, I'd, f I'd fucking win. But it wasn't. Because then came Sork. With his fucking Sturdy. Now Sturdy plus a full restore equals not very fun times for me. Sork outsped me with the speed debuff. 
So while I got it, I almost one shot it with an earthquake. It got down to one health. Full restored back up. Sturdy was restored again. Sturdy was restored again. Same thing happened twice, and then it just crit shot me because it was quicker. I tried to heal stall, but it crit me, and I died. <laughs> so a couple more Mianchao deaths later, and I got lucky. I avoided the bulldoze using dig. Big brain play, I know. So we didn't get the speed debuff. We killed throw. We take out Hankada in one hit. Boom, bash, dead. We outspeed Mianchao. Boom, bash, dead. Two earthquakes. Fucking pog champ. Let's, let's go. This is it. This is the win. Holy shit. There was Sork. Did the same thing. Activate sturdy, full restored. Activate sturdy, full restored. But then he was out of four of stores. And he was on one health. And I outsped. And I fucking finished him off with an earthquake. And like that, we had beaten the fine type Elite 4 member. My biggest obstacle of the entire game was done. To the Elite 4, I swept through them like a virus in a wet market. Topical? Maybe. But it's the best analogy I can think of. <laughs> I'd beaten the Elite 4 by Trishy Sandile. It was time for me to take on Alder, the Univer Region's champion. Oh. Oh no. What? what? Why is N there? What's, what's, what's N doing there? Oh god, oh, fuck, he summoned a castle. Oh Jesus. So, we go into the castle. I summon Reshiram. And as it's part of the story, I have to capture it. So instead of fighting it and killing it, I just throw a Master Ball, catch it. Bish bash boom. Let's continue the story, lads. I'm not going to be using Reshiram. I just need to capture it for the, for the story. And now it's time for me to finally bust up N. I've done it plenty of times before, I'll do it again, fuck it. And it begins. Sandal absolutely beans Zekrom. Doesn't get affected by Fusion Bolt. One Earthquake and he's dead. Same with Vanillux. And Kling Clang. I mean Zoroark. And Karakar. Oh no. He has Sturdy as well. Yeah, Karakasta kinda ended my run for me. This man's effectively soft locked me at that battle with N. So I figured, oh you know what, it would just be the same as Sork. He'll use two full restores and then I'll get him again. No, that wasn't the case at all. This motherfucking turtle ruined this challenge. And I'm not happy. I can't fucking Oko it and I can't outspeed Aqua Jet. You see where I'm going with this? Okay, he full restores once, I'm like alright. Get him out to one health again. Then he fucking aqua he fucking aqua jets. I can't beat that. It's super effective against me. Are you telling me I can beat an aqua jet? No, I can't. <sighs> fuck you, N. And fuck Caracosta. So I couldn't beat Pokemon Black because of a fucking turtle. I spent like three days, three days doing this just to be stopped by a fucking turtle. Hope you enjoyed. This has been a fun video to make. Uh, I will do more of these in the future if you want to see them. Um, I was planning on doing a Sundial Black 2 run, so if you want to see that, that will probably happen. If you have any other Pokemon games you want me to see me solo run, then you know, put down in the comments. And yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace. <laughs> Fucking Caracoster, I swear to God. Hey, oh, uh, uh, I've been up for like two hours. Two hours. Yo, bitch can food took a few showers. Few showers. I don't buy my just money dance. Yeah. That wristwatch costs a hundred grand.